Yeah, okay, so um, I'm here today with uh, Florian. We're going to do some K18 measurements. Um, one of the motivations for doing this was that I think I've sat in enough um, demonstrations of Florian's to realize that I can't do this very well anymore. <laughs> he knows a lot more about it than I do. So, um, yeah, Florian, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks. Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Florian Armian. Um, I'm a half and half application engineer and development engineer. One of my fields of work is amplifier measurements and especially the K18 option that we have. And today we want to talk a little bit about some very basic features or some very basic things when you're doing amplifier measurements. So what we're doing today, um, we're measuring a simple, a very simple amplifier, broadband amplifier from 100 megahertz, 4 gigahertz roughly. And my setup is really simple. I have a vector signal generator on the one hand side that goes into the amplifier and the output of the amplifier is connected to our signal and spectrum analyzer FSW. Now, speaking about amplifiers, I guess a very large percentage of amplifiers is built and operated using modulated signals. Speaking of modulated signals, it can be nearly anything from cellular communications like LTE or 5G to Wi-Fi to satellite links. Even radar signals are in many, many cases modulated. So why is that of importance? It makes a pretty, um, pretty much a difference for the device and the test if you operate it with a real world signal like let's use a 5G signal or a CW signal. That's very obvious since a modulated signal has bandwidth on the one hand side and in addition it has amplitude modulation on it, so varying ampli input amplitudes. Now the traditional measurements on an amplifier is very often done with a vector network analyzer which in most cases only provides a CW test signal. So today we want to have a look at what or how the same device or same device in the test behaves with a CW test stimulus compared to a modulated signal. All right, so in the first case we want to look at a CW signal that is swept in amplitude. So basically we're doing a power sweep there. You can see the signal here in the spectrum dialog um, basically varying in amplitude. As you can see there is no bandwidth, it's always at the same frequency, it's just varying in amplitude. Now with that we go into the amplifier measurement personality and we'll have a closer look at the signal. Um, the amplifier measurement personality is already configured. It is connected to the signal generator and I have queried the generator for the reference signal so that the personality knows what the signal generator is transmitting. With that, it tries to find what we call the reference waveform in the measured data and it marks that by a green bar here in the magnet capture diagram. Analyzing that or comparing this measured data against the reference, we do end up with a AMAM curve that for most, most of you are, I'm sure, familiar with. As I mentioned in the beginning, our test signal here is simply a CW signal, so it's a single curve that we see. We see we drive we drive the signal into compression up here. This is the, well, pretty much compressed part. And it's very, very similar for the phase curve. We see compression up here and phase going away from the zero degree that we typically expect uh, quite significantly. 
so this is the typical, let's say, RAM sweep measurement with a CW signal that is also done very often on a VNA. So with our modulated signal in mind, this is basically the one extreme. No bandwidth, but a lot of amplitude variation. I think I, I'm using a, a 35 dB ramp signal there. We could use more or less. Uh, that doesn't matter at all. Anything that you can basically write into an arbitrary waveform file can be used as a test stimulus here. So as I said, this is the one extreme. What will be the other extreme? Now, we're talking about amplitude variation here. So the other extreme is frequency variation. And since we're talking about the extremes, we want to find a test signal that has bandwidth, but has not or has no amplitude variation. And that is a chirp. So what I'll do now is I'll go to my signal generator and switch on a chirp signal and measure that and analyze it in exactly the same way. Now with the signal generator configured, I go back to the amplifier option. And basically what I do is I again have to query the reference signal because my, my test signal changed. And from looking at the default screens, we can already see in the, in the magnitude capture RF display that there is no amplitude variation anymore. However, uh, the AMAM -AM and AMPM display still shows some variation, and I'll explain that in a minute. Now, since we are talking about frequency variation or bandwidth, we don't, or we most likely don't want to look at AMAM -AM or AMPM anymore. We want to look at the frequency response. So I'll bring up displays for magnitude and phase versus frequency and we'll zoom into that as you can see there is some magnitude variation um, which results mainly from mismatch at either the input or output side of the device on the test with the phase, it's very similar. Zooming shows there is quite some variation over our bandwidth. Now, with these two plots in mind, the variation in, in frequency response in magnitude and phase, it is fairly easy to explain what's happening here in the AMA -AM plot. The AMAM -AM plot basically shows the output amplitude versus the input amplitude. As we have discussed, the input amplitude is constant. That is why the x-axis shows a range from 0.9 to 0.9 dBm. Um, however, on the y-axis, the variation is, well, roughly around half a dB. So why is this? The reason for that is exactly the variation that we see here in the frequency response plot. And reading the grid numbers shows that this is the 0.5 dB again that we see here in variation between the maximum and the uh, minimum values. So even though these plots probably do not give us a lot of insight here for our chirp signal, the results correspond very well to our frequency response plots. Typically, what do we do with the frequency response? 
in wideband and wideband is of course relative here um, real life systems you will typically find some sort of equalizer in the receiver equalizer basically means uh, the system is trying to flatten out the um, frequency response by using a filter this is something that can be easily configured and set up in the amplifier measure measurement personality we do have an equalizer tab here and basically what we want to do is train the equalizer and apply it and what we'll find is a flat response after that and that does of course not only apply to the magnitude but also to the phase so florian just to kind of preempt uh some questions here i guess um you know one of the things that we see in the market is, is also kind of um here you use a the equalizer built in but i i guess you could use maybe an external filter maybe um captured from a network analyzer to also compensate for this or compensate for the dut mismatch for example sure sure um i i think this is basically two different questions um number one is you want to compensate the mismatches in your test system so that would mean you are measuring s parameters it's prob tables, probably a subject for another video right <laughs> a whole other video on yeah. its own i think definitely that's a that's a it is a complex um field However, I maybe just want to mention quickly that we have the capability of doing that using the user correction. And since you were asking someone might want to load in some user-defined filter, I think we should mention that we can not only compensate for S parameters of the uh, components in our setup, but we can also um, compensate for any user-defined equalization filter. Let's say you have a fixed equalization filter. You can also load that into it and see what the result is when that filter is being taken into account. Okay, cool. That's quite interesting. I mean, even though we're only talking about effectively CW signals at the moment, i.e. Um, a power sweep or even um, a frequency sweep, when it comes to more complex modulated signals, this is going to be um quite a big portion of that topic i think yes i think you're definitely right i guess what we'll do is to sort of um add the next chapter to that story is combine the amplitude variation and the frequency variation because that will then give us quite some more for now we had the amplitude variation where the am am and amp plots are quite intuitive to use and then the the frequency variation where we well i would say that the channel response windows are quite intuitive to use and now we want to use a fully modulated signal as a test signal so let's take that single carrier signal so this is single carrier with Presumably it's 100 mega symbols. 100 mega symbols, yeah. okay. And um, basically all I wanted to show is that now we do get um, a channel response plot and an AMAM plot that looks familiar, including an AMPM plot from one measurement. So by taking a fully modulated signal you're not only exciting the device on the test with i usually call, call it the real world signal even though i don't know if that's the right term but the main benefit we get is we're not only exciting the device on the test with the real signal but we also get both measurements the general response measurements and distortion measurements from the same measurement so I do a single shot, I get both results. It's one key advantage of that measurement personality.
So I guess in reality, I mean, when you have an amplifier, it, it's typically never excited with just a CW signal. It, there is always some amplitude variation and some frequency variation, and here you can do both at the same time, right? Exactly. I think that's probably the end of the first video, right? I think that's a good point to stop for now.